Hi, everyone. This is Dr. Elena Villanueva, founder and chief health coach with Modern Holistic Health. And welcome to our episode of our Tribe Talk podcast today. I have our co-host, Anne and Haley, joining us. They are our lead health coaches here on Modern Holistic Health team. And we have a very, very special guest today. And his name is TJ, the olive oil hunter. And let me just tell you a little bit about TJ. We're going to go through some questions today. So we're all going to get to know more about TJ and why he's doing what he's doing. And, uh, but I just want to give you a little bit about what I know about TJ. So uh, TJ lives in North Carolina and, um, and he has a passion obviously for the, for the olive oil industry. And, um, I had an opportunity to get connected with TJ just a couple of months ago. Um, and when I found out his story and what he's doing, I thought, oh my God, I absolutely Absolutely have to try some of this olive oil and uh, and now I actually have a collection of olive oil uh, the way that I would have had a collection of different wines about a decade ago um, although I don't really drink wine anymore so um, now it's my collection of olive oils let me just show you what I've got here I have like three of the nine olive oils that I have in my collection sitting here because I can't pick up all nine of them yeah it's funny I have several of them and they are so good and one of the things that 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 even I have become privy to is is um, is that most of us don't even know what real fresh olive oil is supposed to taste like. Why? Because we've never consumed it before. So we don't really know what it is until we've actually had it. And so TJ, thank you so much for joining us today. We're super excited to have you with us. Oh, it's my pleasure. I'm so happy to be here and to talk about olive oil, something I'm very passionate about. Uh, there's so many myths out there around olive oil, like you can't cook with it and, you know, smoke point and, you know, uh, really low price olive oil is the same as the expensive stuff. I mean, there's just so many myths and, and it's so disguised for the dis the consumer on how to pick the good stuff. So we have a, a lot of education uh, in this area. So I'm really happy uh, with folks like you that are helping me get the word out about the power of olive oil, especially when it's fresh and consumed the way it was meant to be in the Mediterranean. So thank you for having me on. Yes, we're super excited to have you. So there are so many questions that we have that we want to ask you. And um, Anne and Haley and I are going to kind of take turns asking you some of these questions. Awesome. Um, and so I just wanted to start out with the first one, which is why did you start the Fresh Pressed Olive Oil Club? <laughs> well, that, that's a good one. I'll try to keep it brief because I could go on for hours about this. But uh, essentially, I, I was a classically trained chef. Um, I was a chef of Biltmore Estate when I was around the winery there when I was around 21 years old. Um, I went to a proper culinary school. I was a trained culinarian and pastry chef and i knew a fair amount about um about food and wine uh i got a wonderful job working for the food network uh, when i was 22 and one of my jobs there uh, was to go out and uh, as a journalist and gather stories uh, and one of my assignments was um, a trip to sicily and I was like over the moon, like I Sicily, it's like this storied place, you know, it's got lots of mystique and uh, just like uh, it's, it's a it's a beautiful island uh, in southern Italy and just steeped in tradition and culture and, you know, stories. Um, and so anyway, I was invited to Sicily. And like I said, I knew good food, good wine. I had traveled all over the world and I was invited by this family to come and pick their olive fruit with them. So olives are harvested once a year, uh, just like normal, say an apple tree is harvested once a year. Um, and growing up in the South, I don't really, I didn't really have a clue what I was in for. I don't even really realize that, that olives were a fruit at the time. I mean, this was 20 years ago. I was such a little kid. Um, but anyway, it was, um, I was invited to this harvest party with this family. 
and we we took all day we we um uh, it was small family uh mateo and his family invited me out to their farm you know i was on the side of this hill just overlooking the mediterranean all these olive trees i thought i had died and gone to italy or something but it was so nice um and uh so we started picking these olive fruits from the tree and i noticed they were really green and and i was like wow these are spectacular i tasted them they're bitter when they were fresh um and i was so so basically, I learned about olive harvesting that day, and we we beat the trees with with the sticks and the rakes, and they landed on these nets, and we put them in these small bins, and we covered them to keep the sunlight out from uh, getting the olives warm, and then in the evening we we piled them in the back of these. Um, small SUVs. They're kind of like a Ford Pinto. It's the Italian Panda. It's kind of like a Ford Pinto. But you, you put all these bins of fruit in and you drive to the local mill. And there were about 20 of us because cousins and aunts and uncles, like we all got together. You know, they all got together because uh, this is a big family celebration. And this is the oil the family uses all year round. And they use a lot of olive oil. So anyway, um, we took these bins, we go to the mill, we write our little slip on our paper with our little stack, we wait our turn, you know, people are like toasting bread and just like celebrating like this is a big time of year for their culture. Um, anyway, uh, let's fast forward a couple hours, it was finally our turn. Uh, and I was given um, at the end of the olive press a, a, ta a tasting cup, something like this, a little white solo cup. And out of the, the tube there, out of the press, um, what was flowing into this glass looked like fresh pressed wheatgrass. It looked foamy. It smelled vibrant. It smelled like wheatgrass. I mean, it was just like, you're telling me this is olive oil? I don't believe it because as an American, I have never tasted or smelled anything quite like this. So I stuck my nose to the glass and I was, it was just like a whole garden of flavors. It was green, it was vibrant, it was alive. And then I tasted it and it was bitter and spicy. And I'm like, what is this? Like this stuff I've been sold in America, uh, you know, in the supermarket, it, it's a totally different product. So I learned right then uh, about 20 years ago that I was um, not exposed to the good stuff. And I had only had the industrial bulk olive oil that was most mostly sold in America at that time. We were known as the dumping ground for bad olive oil. There's lots of studies done uh, by UC Davis that went in and did investigation stories. Um, it's just really hard to find the real stuff uh and and so anyway that's been my mission ever since that first taste it was a life-changing moment for me and i knew like i had to take some home share it with my friends and they just went wild over it and i said okay i you know i gotta help get the word out on this and then the health story started coming out about the oleocanthal and about uh, the polyphenols in the olive oil helping inflammation and and the gut health and the brain health and you know that's your expertise we can talk more about that but um you know it's just been an interesting ride for the last 20 years uh getting the word out about super high quality olive oil Wow, that's really amazing. So, um, um, Haley, did you have a question that you wanted to ask? Okay, I think I think she might not. I'm muted. Hey, Here we go. Hi. I got it. So, yeah, my question for you is: What is the difference in artisan produced extra virgin olive oil versus? mass-produced olive oil. Can you lay that out for us? Yes. So there's industrial olive oil, which is a bulk process mm -hmm. um, that is really about the fruit on the trees. As the fruit hangs on the tree, it gets more oil inside. So the olives start green, and then about a month or two later, depending on the olive variety, they'll turn completely black. And within that range, the oil content inside the fruit changes. So at 10, typically a very green fruit would have around 10% of oil in it, where if you let the same fruit hang on the tree for another month or two, you could have up to 30% oil in that um, olive when it's pressed. Now, the health differences between the green and the black are striking. Like when you taste fresh 
low yield, like competition style olive oils, you taste that greenness, you taste the polyphenols, the antioxidants, the bitterness, the spiciness. So really, when you talk about artisanal olive oil, two things make the difference. One is the quality of the fruit and when it's harvested. So really green fruit, high quality fruit. And two, a fantastic mill slash miller, and that is a machine, and typically, and a and a, and a personality, and an artist who makes this oil. So they, um, the farmers I work with, they're single estates, so they grow their own fruit, and they have their own mill on their their press on their farm, so they control. They're not wait, fruits not waiting and sitting and that sort of thing. Um, so it's a it's a uh, from the machine perspective the higher quality machines they uh, let less oxygen in the process so this uh, and they also work at a lower temperature so what this does it preserves all the aromas in the fruit itself so the least you can do from the fruit hanging on the tree to the bottle the better like you you don't want to muck with it like it's mother nature sauce that she's making for you and you just want the the absolute powerhouse of a of a fresh green oil so very few commercial and and olive oil is sold in bulk by the leader so most producers they just let the fruit hang a couple extra months and they get two to three times the amount of oil because they have bills to pay and they don't have the consumers there like me who are health seekers and olive oil flavor seekers as an ex-chef to be like i want the good stuff i'm willing to pay for it and you know so we can go more into that. I'm sure you'll have other questions. So I won't wow, rattle on too long. <laughs> that's so interesting. So there's really a few components. There's definitely some common themes, you know, mm. there with other mass produced, just the food industry in general. Absolutely. So, well, like, like, uh, just think like apple juice, for example. You guys, like, I'm a Southern boy. I grew up going in the fall, looking to going to the cider house where they're going to press fresh apples. And I knew like as the season went on, the apples would get sweeter, the juice would get sweeter. And I knew very um, definitively the difference between fresh pressed apple cider versus a box of Welch's uh, apple juice. So like imagine store-bought olive oil being a box of Welch's apple juice uh, versus, you know, Tetra Pact versus a, a live fresh pressed apple cider. So that's kind of the difference when, and we can talk about how to identify the flavors that let you know that it's fresh as well as we, as we go on through the call. Okay. Awesome. That's, yeah, that, go ahead. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's my question. That's kind okay. Of go ahead. Question. How, uh, TJ, how do, how does the olive fruit variety actually play a role in the taste that you talk yes. about? Yes. Well, I know Dr. V, you're not a big wine drinker anymore, but I'm sure you have some recollection of whether you were like a Merlot drinker or you are a Cabernet drinker. Like most people know in the grape world about, um, different fruit and how it's expressed in its juice. Well, the same with olive oil. Actually, there are around 550 olive varieties in Italy alone. So each of these olive varieties, they're kind of classified in families um, and they've adapted to microclimates where they are in certain regions. Let's just say in Italy alone, we're talking 550 varieties. Some are used for um, table fruit production. So like you would see on your olive bar um, and others are used for solely for olive oil and some are used for both. Uh, I personally love olive oils that are made from table fruit, uh, the, that, that style of, of fruit. Um, typically it has more flavor. So I definitely seek those, but um, uh, different olive varieties have different um let me see. I would say the easiest way to identify them would say by the fruitiness, by the amount of fruitiness, some olive varieties will be more bitter than others and robust, and some will be softer, uh, less spicy or more spicy. So these olive varieties, um, when you deal with single estate olive oils, you, you really can focus on these olive varieties and blend them to make uh, really exciting olive oils in the bottle. Like I said, sauces that mother nature made for you. Wow. So 
I have a question. I have a couple of questions actually, <laughs> okay, please. Because, because this is bringing me back to my days of when I did really enjoy the wines and I did a lot of wine tastings and I went to France and I tried different wines. And I, I mean, I absolutely, I loved the whole, you know, I loved all of the history behind wine. I just yes. loved all of it. I thought it was so interesting. And, and one of the things that I learned, uh, and this, this applies to wine and beer, you know, and liquors is that, is that, um, during the, um, during the fermentation process, depending on like what, um, what different pollens and things are floating through the air, it can all, you know, and the weather that year and all yes. and the rain and all that it can affect this the, the flavor of the wine. Is that the same case with olive oil? Absolutely. Absolutely. That's one reason why you can't find just one farm and go to them year after year and just get the oil because olive trees, first of all, they produce a different quantity every other year. So one year they will be heavy production. One day they will be really low. Um, and olives, like I said, are being a fruit. You, you've got to, to make an amazing olive oil. What we're talking about is competition style olive oil. You've got to have amazing fruit. So the, 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 these microclimates um, around the globe uh, produce I'm just trying to think like in Italy this year. So typically in, I love a Tuscan oil. And I love traveling to Tuscany and, you know, being, you know, like France with the culture of wine is there with olive oil, of course, and wine too. But the, um, this year, for example, in, in Tuscany, they had almost zero olives, almost none. Where last year I had a beautiful Tuscan olive oil for the club. This year, very little and, and pretty low quality what was actually produced so you it's one of these products that um uh, through relationships i've been work cultivating and working with italy's best farmers um also spain's best farmers greece's best farmers uh in the northern hemisphere and then we also go to the southern hemisphere as well so in chile and argentina and australia mm -hmm. uh so these these microclimates the fruit the terroir the sun the miller, uh, how much rain was there around the time of harvest? Because if the fruit has a lot of water inside, it waters down the polyphenols. Remember, only about 10% is oil. The rest is pit, uh, solids, and, and water. Uh, so it really um, is a year-by-year, varietal-by-varietal thing. Um, you pick a good producer, like I work with with the top producers in the world. There's an olive oil guide, a world olive oil guide called Flo Sole. They rank the top producers in the world. Typically um, for the club, I work with the majority of the top 20 in the world, all of top ranking olive oil producers in the world. And then I get their best stuff because they save it for my club members because they know I'm there where they have the good stuff uh, and, and, you know, and, and want to share it because it's the peak of what they're able to do too. They're proud of it. It's their family it's their heritage it's their great great grandfather's trees and they want to share that with an audience they don't want it to go sit on a store shelf for six months to a year two years and be sold at clearance at you know william sonoma or wherever they want it to go be flown in by jet and go directly to my consumers my club members who just you know eat, eat it up literally and drink it uh so anyway it's a it's a very symbiotic re relationship um, and, and a lot of fun. But yes, as a, sorry, I went around that, but it's no, exactly what, what, what you're saying. You know, you can't just pick one and say, hey, that's it. It's everything affects it. The weather, the trees, the farmer, et cetera, yeah. et cetera. It's really a good reminder, too, um, of, of how we're connected to nature and how we're a part of an ecosystem. You know, um, our listeners have heard me say that many, many times in regards to their health. You know, it's the yes. same thing with the health and the and the vibrancy of, of the olive oil as yes. well. And and, and what it can give back to us in terms of health. It's so important to take care of our climate and to, and to really be connected to our own ecosystem. So speaking, speaking of some of these similarities between like wines and oils, I mean, I'm, I go back to the wine thing because I have, I, you know, I have more education in that area and you're educating me and all of us today on olive oil. Thank but you. 
I learned that you also have some quarterly selections that are blends of different yes. olive oil. Why yes. would you make a blend versus a pure olive oil? Yes. So uh, basically my club members get three bottles a quarter. They're always from three different farms um, or three very specific olive um, blends. And what I give people is a mild, a medium, and a bold every quarter. So they get a tasting note card. Uh, you guys have, have seen this and it's kind of like pairing wine and food. Uh, lighter olive oils go with lighter foods, heavier olive oils go with heavier foods. So if I'm making a grilled charred steak on the grill, I'm probably going to use my bold oil. If I'm making a light um, vegetable like a cauliflower soup, I might use a, a little drizzle of my light oil. I wouldn't say light, but mild oil as a finishing. So when I say we talked about those olive varieties, so how it works is I land in country I do a grand tasting. So I have my boots on the ground. They make the rounds for me. Uh, my buddy cheered. Um, he's Dutch. He speaks eight languages. Uh, so he, you know, he's good with Italian and Spanish and French, but uh, he goes and he does the rounds and sees all my producer families and picks up samples for me, a big road trip starting in Sicily and working all the way up to Tuscany and then meeting me in Rome. I land, I do a grand tasting. It's like a big smell test and a big taste test. And I identify the farms that are like, yes, uh, this year, Claudio is the man. His fruit is beautiful. I love the smell of his um, uh, Drita. Let's say this one is Drita. Uh, his Drita is amazing. I'm going to go visit him. So Drita is a single olive variety. Um, and... Uh, let's use this one, for example, the one from Sicily, the Cutrera. So at this farm, um, uh, they have, there's two olive varieties in this olive oil. So I show up at the farm, I taste the Tonde Blea, and I'm like, that's amazing. It's beautiful. It's got a nice backbone. It's, uh, it's just a beautiful fragrant, like perfume of an olive oil. And then I also taste the, mo the Nochilara, which is the other olive variety that is inside this bottle. And I am as an ex chef, and I think of olive oil as a sauce that mother nature made for you. I basically take the raw ingredients of those two oils and find the ratio that is the perfect complement for a mild oil. This is the mild oil of the quarter. So I've blended the ratio to be the mild oil. Um, so it's kind of like composing music um, where you combine different olive varieties, the juice of those to find a beautiful harmony because you want an oil to have a roundness in the mouth. You want it to have all these characteristics. Like with this one, for example, um, the, the Sicilian Nochilara and the Tonde Ablea. I say this is the mildest oil in the trio. On the nose, it evokes tomato leaf, lettuce, celery, mint, baby spinach, walnuts, and a whiff of pear, complemented by wheatgrass, Belgian endive, and white pepper. So think of that as wine notes. These are just things that you may smell and identify in the oil when you have it in a tasting cup. Expect a lush, velvety mouthfeel and grassy flavors with spinach, celery, lime, tomato leaf, and green apple peel in this well-balanced oil, which also features a bitterness akin to Belgian endive and walnut skins. On the finish, you'll notice a fresh ginger-like and white pepper uh, spiciness. What ginger... Uh, sorry, ginger and white pepper like spiciness. So that those are kind of like the notes you get with each oil. And then I say pair this genial oil with salads such as those featuring tomatoes, fruit, walnuts, or spinach, chicken and turkey, shrimp, scallops, lobster, mild fin fish, including cod, whitefish, halibut, or sole, fresh cheeses such as mozzarella, ricotta, or burrata, yogurt, simple pasta dishes, potatoes, sweet potatoes, mushrooms, green beans, and carrots, risotto, focaccia, or white pizza, and quick breads or biscotti. So that's kind of like the quick like cliff notes uh, for this oil uh, that you will have, you know, that you can use for baking and you can use for lots of different things. So anyway. And these, this is the type of detail 
uh, that you are putting into these pressing reports that are delivered with the quarterly olive oil shipments so that people can really get not only educated, but understand how to pair their olive oil with their foods. This is amazing. <laughs> Yeah, that's the producer, the guy I'm standing with there. I don't know if you guys could see that photo, but yeah. that's Salva Salvatore uh, Cutrera. He, in fact, I after reading that, there was no way that I could not pour a glass. Of, and I just poured it in my tasting cup and it's like exploding. Like, it's like incredible the amount of aroma that's coming out of this oil. It's just, I don't know if you guys have this oil. This is the mild of the quarter. Um, I okay. use a small tasting glass like this. I put about um, a, a teaspoon uh, or about a tablespoon inside. And, and then I, I use the palm of my hand and I put the tasting cup there and that warms the oil. So it just, it just warms the oil and releases all the aromas, those okay. things I talked about, like you just open the cap and you can smell it. You don't really have to, but um, it's like a flavor, like a, a, an, an aromatic explosion because you can really taste the ascent and smell the essential oils in here, you know? It and does that, smell totally different than it, any other <laughs> olive oil that I've ever bought, right? I like it, 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 it really does. Um, and Haley, did you guys get your shipments in yet? I just got mine yesterday and it was so funny. I got the tasting cup before the all of them. I was like, who sent me this? What is this? And then it made sense. So yes, I have it. I'm so excited. Uh, well, what I do, I invite people to take the oil out of their pantry they're currently using that they think is olive oil or what real olive oil is, even though it's labeled as extra virgin. And it might be good olive oil, but it's standard bulk commodity olive oil, right? Even if it's in a fancy bottle with a, a high price, these people, they don't have the control that I have. I work directly with the farmer. I'm the single link in the chain between the farmer and my club member. So, and I have complete control. I fly it in by jet, I bottle it, I send it direct to my club member. So there's no monkeying around uh, with, with, the, uh, with the product and that makes a big difference. So what I invite people to do is to do their own taste test at home. Uh, so, you, t you know, put, take your olive oil, your pantry, which may be a good one and give it a smell and we can talk about the identifiers and what to look for, um, but taste it against fresh pressed olive oil. And you can see Dr. V, you talk about um, like uh, this connection to mother nature. Um, there is a real connection to, with this product. Uh, the, the, the olive tree is just, has so many health benefits. I mean, from everything, you know, you, you've talked about many times, but so many changes to our health take a lot of work. You know, I'm inherently lazy. I tell my wife that um, she laughed when I, when we met and I told her I'm inherently lazy, but she, she said, um, yeah, changing olive oil in your diet, changing one item in your diet and automating it is just a very simple change. It's a very simple oil change that once it's done, you have this backbone of healthy cooking, whether it's a simple cook something very simply, whether it's a grilled chicken breast or steaming green beans, and then drizzling a little bit of mother nature's olive oil on it, fresh olive oil. And it just lights up like you're suddenly this you know amazing home chef just because you have the power of this health promoting ingredient so it's not um it's not difficult you're not having to uh you know do a lot to to make this change but it's a it's a simple change but i guarantee you you will taste and feel the difference whether you're putting it in your smoothies or whether you're just drinking it by the tablespoon a lot of my club members have a teaspoon every morning um, because they like the feel of the olive oil the bitterness and the spiciness uh, and also the health benefits of lowering inflammation PJ, at the beginning of this chat, you talked about some of the uh, misconceptions about olive oil. Talk a little bit about that. We're talking about, you know, our audiences, our clients and people who follow yes. us who are trying to get healthier and making those diet changes that you talked about. And there are some misconceptions about how and when to use olive oil. Talk about that a bit. That's right. Well, olive oil, uh, there's been a big smear campaign against cooking with olive oil. Uh, 
I don't understand why. Uh, in fact, I can send you guys some articles about the stability of olive oil when it's heated. Uh, it actually has a very high level when it's fresh and high quality olive oil. These uh, polyphenols actually protect the oil as it's heated. So they, it keeps it from oxidizing. So starting with an oil that has a high level of antioxidants, which our oils are third party tested, not only to be 100% extra virgin, uh, chemically, but also via smell as well with a tasting panel within Italy at their top lab. But they also measure the polyphenol levels, the amount of antioxidants inside the, the, the bottle of olive oil. And you want to get it when it's fresh because that those polyphenols start to drop by about 50% in the first six months. So you want to get it fresh. So what happens when you cook with olive oil is um, a couple tips uh, related to cooking with olive oil. Yes, you can absolutely Absolutely cook, cook with it. If you were in an Italian grandmother's kitchen, the only oil you're going to find is extra virgin olive oil. She's going to use that for marinating. She's going to use that for her salad dressing. She's going to use that for sauteing her vegetables. She's going to use it as a sauce. She's going to put the bottle on the table when you eat dinner because she's going to use it as a condiment. Very few oils in our lives are used as condiments, but when they're really good olive oil, you can use it as a condiment as well. So um, one of the tips uh, that I like I fry my eggs every morning in fresh pressed olive oil. Um, I take my pan, I put it on the stove. I let the pan get hot. I add my oil. I immediately add my eggs. Notice the order. I didn't put my pan on a cold stove, add my oil, turn on the heat, walk around, try to find my eggs and let my oil sit there and start to burn. Like that was not the goal. Um, you you want to cook at medium low temperature is ideal. Medium, medium low is ideal, but it is a very stable fat for cooking. So you can use it for sauteing. Um, like I said, I can send you the research, but they've done these looking at polar, uh, polar compounds that are produced in the oil as it's heated over time. And there are less polar compounds in high quality olive oil versus soybean, canola, rice bran, you know, all these other inflammatory oils. Um, and then the other thing about um, olive oil, the you can use it. We we're talking about health hacks and easy ways to like upgrade. Of course, you can use it as a sauce, like I said, to kind of upgrade simple things that you you make, whether it's steamed veggies or roast veggies or whatever. But also really identifying bottled dressings. People like when they get healthy, they go to the store, they buy all these bottled dressings. And if you look at those, they have stabilizers, they have really bad fats, probably low quality olive oil, if there's olive oil inside, um, and a lot of fillers and sugar. So one of the things you can do very simply is um, to use olive oil and lemon juice or olive oil and fresh herbs or olive, drizzle of olive oil and a drizzle of vinegar and a little fresh herbs. Make your own vinaigrettes at home. People don't know how easy it is. You just take a little mason jar, you put in a little olive oil, a little squeeze of citrus juice, some maybe some herbs, a little squirt of honey, shake it up, you know, garlic if you like, shallot if you like, shake it up, put it on your salad. It's so easy. It's fresh. It's alive. It'll live in your fridge for a few days. Like um, So those kind of health swaps will make really big changes in your diet uh, long term. I love using it as a condiment. Um, I was just showing a photo. This is oh, this is the I other love, day. Yes, my cladium. The, oh, that's yeah. A good one. And oh, I just I, I literally like just, just drizzled it all over my food, and I, I mean it was just it. it was so delicious. We're all going through a twenty one day cleanse, um, and it's a food based diet. So we're yes. eating food. Oh, I love it. Cleanse the body. Um, and then it. some of the food is is made into a powder form. It's from a company called Standard Process, and okay. um, and so we're just adding like more dense concentration of these uh, food based nutrients into our body. I love it. And I love it. Um, and I mean, when you talk about using it as a condiment, guys, for those of you listening, guys and gals, um, it really is an amazing condiment. So you know, you can cook with it, and you can use it as a condiment. And you know, I was going to make a comment on one of the things that you said that you know, all of us have learned that you should not cook with olive oil. It makes me wonder if the reason why that's being said is because so many of the other olive, olive oils out there are not pure, fresh olive oil. Like a lot of them are 
uh, this is what I hear. I don't know if this is true. Rape seed oils, that they're bad seed oils. They're, they're like unhealthy, like very unhealthy seed oils. They're probably yes. old and unstable as well. And so that would make sense that you don't want to heat those up. Yes. Yeah. And they have a lot more marketing dollars, right? Like those big, you know, canolas and all those other oils that are out there. I mean, they have a lot more marketing dollars than, you know, families in Italy and Spain who are producing olive oil, which most the high quality stuff's really sold locally and never really gets to America. Um, and people want to get the benefits of the Mediterranean diet. They hear all about that, but they're using old olive oil, which is, is not as ideal as it look olive oil is good for you it's a healthy fat it, it's good like if that's what you can afford is store-bought olive oil you know go for it it's better than canola oil and and the other which i would consider more inflammatory oils um if that's where you are uh if you're somewhere someone who can invest in your health and make a simple change um and of course we'll talk about how easy we make this for people uh at the end of the end of the podcast um uh with with letting people try it in their homes to see if they like the oil a, a bottle for them um for your listeners it's not on our website so we'll talk about that um but you know the it's absolutely true that um you know olive oil it it I, I don't know where if it was like that, re, that like um, the rise of coconut oil. And that was like, oh, no, you only cook with coconut oil because it's very safe. I don't know if it was coconut oil, um, but I did notice with that salad, uh, two things I noticed with your salad. One is um, the olive oil, especially fresh olive oil with high polyphenols, has a very high level of satiety. It creates a satisfaction uh, deep in, in your gut, in your brain. Uh, and there's this connection where if you have a little olive oil 30 minutes before you eat, you actually over time consume less calories. You feel more satisfied. So olive oil is spectacular for someone who is looking to increase healthy fats and also cutting back and looking for high uh, level of satiety foods versus the ones that, you know, make you crave more and more and more. Uh, so one thing, and then the other thing I wanted to mention is um, the olive oil is a wonderful carrier for all the other green stuff that was on your plate. It makes, uh, it basically creates compounds of um, bioavailable. It, and and <laughs> you're, you're the doctor here, but, you know, it makes food more bioavailable to your system, to your gut, etc. cetera. Um, so for, so using the best kind of lock and key for those kind of ingredients, a high quality, um, you know, key makes a huge difference between, you know, those two links in the chain. So I felt that was important to mention. Yeah, absolutely. TJ, can you tell me what is what is the refrigerator test? And can you <laughs> use that to confirm if, uh, if olive oil is pure or not? Sadly, no, it doesn't work. Um, Dr. Oz went on a few years ago and said, all you have to do is take your bottle of olive oil that you buy at the supermarket. Because this is the time when, when 60 Minutes was doing uh, stories on the big olive oil scams. And uh, UC Davis was saying that 70% of olive oil sold in America is extra virgin is not because there's not really anyone checking. Uh, there's a, so uh, Dr. Oz said, just stick your olive oil in the fridge. And if it solidifies, it's not extra virgin uh absolutely not true um different olive varieties have different um fat content and wax content like you and and to be considered extra virgin it has to go through two types of testing one is chemical analysis where they look at the quality of the fruit the olive oil the finished product always tells the story of the whole process. How was the, how was the season? How was the fruit? Uh, was there a lot of rain at the time of harvest? Like was 
the um, was the mill clean? Did the did the oil sit the, the fruit sit around and not get pressed right away? How clean was the mill? What type of machine they used? Um, and then how clean was their storage tank? So the second part of an, an extra virgin certification has to do with going through a tasting panel. And this tasting panel, there are a group of people that are professionally trained to identify what are called defects in the olive oil. And when you identify defects, that tells you about the problem problems that happened when processing that oil or growing or, you know, how it was handled, stored, etc. So um, we, all of our oils are third party certified to be 100% pure olive oil, 100% extra virgin. And um, so anyway, I hope I answered that. <laughs> Yes, thank you. Thank you so much for that. Um, so I have a question because we had sure. talked earlier, you had mentioned earlier about people doing a taste test at home, but yes. um, what do we have? I know we've got a little, um, some little fun event that we were talking about that we're planning with our listeners. Um, tell us a little bit about how you are going to help uh, all of us to get our taste buds educated. What do we, what little surprise do we have coming up? Yes. So basically how I built my olive oil club and we're 20 some thousand members strong and I've been doing this for a couple decades and you can tell I'm passionate about it and love educating people about it um, but how I get the word out about my olive oil is I'm a chef and I believe the proof is in the pudding like I want you to taste this I want you to try it against what's in your pantry I will tell you it's a little shocking it's not what you're used to um, you're going to taste some really interesting things in here um, you may be used to like eating iceberg and this may be like the first time someone handed you arugula and you tasted it you're gonna be like what is that um but it's it's the same thing with olive oil it's an, it's an acquired taste we don't love bitter as humans we like chocolate and we like coffee um but bitter is something that most of us don't immediately like run toward um but i will tell you you the best thing to do is uh, take it and and try it um in your cooking uh, as a condiment, etc., because uh, you will start to identify the three things you need to look for, which is the fruitiness, which is all that aroma we talked about, fresh, whether it's grass and apples and, um, you know, whatever's fresh to you, like a culinary garden, rubbed herbs. Uh, also bitterness, uh, fresh olive oil should be bitter. It tells you it's from very green fruit when it was harvested, very high in antioxidants. And then the third thing you should look for is spiciness. So when you taste this oil, you're going to notice a little tickle and maybe a cough in the back of your throat. And this is the ibuprofen-like compound that's found in fresh olive oil. Um, there was a researcher visiting Sicily and tried olive oil, fresh olive oil for the first time. And he actually studied uh, ibuprofen, uh, was, it was his, um, his product that he, he worked in a lab in the US uh, in, in Pennsylvania. Anyway, he took home this bottle of olive oil from Sicily and did research on the compound that was giving him the same sensation that ibuprofen did and he discovered and named a compound for that is now we know is akin to ibuprofen so they've known this a long time in the mediterranean of course not labeling it with a science but they knew that they felt better when they used fresh pressed olive oil and it cooled inflammation and you know all that sort of thing so um yeah so how, how it works is like i said this is not on the website you would have to go to a, a url a dedicated url just for your list Listeners, that URL is get fresh, G E T fresh, F R E S H 93.com. Get fresh 93.com. And there you will get a full size bottle uh, for a buck. So for $1, you're going to sample this. This is the small club size, 250 ml. This is for people that don't cook a lot at home or don't want to take olive oil to the restaurant like me and my wife do. We, we take a bottle to the restaurants because we don't want to consume their bad you know, ranches and such. We ask for extra lemon and bring our own olive oil and put our own dressing on our salads. 
And then this is a large bottle. And this is for people that are really consuming about a tablespoon a day. Um, there are um, 34 servings in here. Uh, so this is good if you're cooking, you're adding it to smoothies. If you're a family of two who cooks a lot at home, uh, this, is, this is the way to go. But you'll get a full-size bottle for a buck. Uh, you try that olive oil at home. You can cancel it anytime. There's no commitment. If you don't love the oil or the style of oil, let us know within two to three weeks and we will say thank you for trying the oil we really appreciate it tell your friends and family about it and we understand it's not for you so there is a very easy you know we're a good guy company you know the owner <laughs> and founder uh, and we we do you know we do what's right by our club members so and then every quarter then from then on you get three bottles of oil a mild a medium and bold from every country of origin so i travel i do the grand tasting like i told you i um i select the oils and then we rush them in by jet and every quarter we have fresh oil so it starts in the northern hemisphere and then uh goes to the southern hemisphere because immigrants they they left um, the mediterranean and in the stitching the linings of their clothes the tailors took olive plantings trees cuttings from their great grandmothers and grandfathers groves and put it in their clothes and when they arrived in chile and argentina and australia they they planted those olive trees in a mediterranean like climate and there so because they needed it for religious ceremony it was their it was their medicine it was their food it was like their like they used it for everything right so anyway it's a it's a really cool global adventure where you get the pressing report you learn all about the oils you get all the recipes there's a big section in the back with all my recipes every quarter um it's it's just it's fun it's just fun i was on mute trying to unmute myself um and so this is awesome so we for all of you listening, we're going to do an olive oil tasting. And so, and so order your, I, I know we've had several people already order their bottle. Um, the rest of you order your bottle and let's do the tasting. Um, when should we do it next month? Yeah, let's do it in like, uh, let's give everybody two weeks. Let's give a, so let's say like, latter part of February, because we really, they want to get their March shipment from Spain and Portugal. These oils are amazing oils. So I can't wait to share them. So you definitely, we, we should do the tasting in the next two weeks because once you, yeah, once you order, it goes second day air direct to where you are anywhere in the U S. So I imagine most people will have their oils within a week if they hop on it. So let's give people two weeks, um, to let's 14 do that days then. out. Let's do that. And then after that, I, I know you're really busy and you may not have time to do this, but after that, I'm sure that there's going to be a lot of, a lot of people just like, just like us, uh, Anne and Haley and I, who got our oils, it might be fun to do an actual tasting with, you know, the first tasting in a couple of weeks that we'll do yes. it comparing the, the one bottle of olive oil that they get from you to what they have right. in their pantry. Yes. Let's and, do then, that. and then we can take the next step and do it like an old fashioned wine tasting. Right. And we oh, can, we can taste it. test all in three, March. all yes, three of the March. oils for those who yes. move forward and decide to go love ahead it. and get in on their quarterly shipments. I love that it. Okay? And that would be, yeah, hey. that would be perfect. That would be at the end of March. And we okay. can talk about the specific recipes in the pressing report. I can give you some tips. We can talk about Spain and the producers and yeah, it, it'll it be a lot of fun. It'll just be fun. It's like a taste adventure. Like, you know, members, they just love it. Like there's a kudo on the back of this one. It's like, I've been a member for six years and love the olive oils we get. I look forward to my quarterly shipment, enjoying the newsletter that comes with it and try the recipes that are given. It's the best money I can spend in my kitchen on a regular basis. Julian from Yorktown, Indiana. So yeah, it's fun. It's like, you know, it yeah, come along with the adventure. It's a lot of fun. Come on. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. We're definitely going to going to do it. And we have it looks like we have a client who says, I'm going to go ahead and read to you what she what she put in the, in the chat, because it sounds like you've come a long way even since she was a member. But she says, um, I love the education I'm receiving. I was a member of the Olive Oil Club for a few years. 
She says, unfortunately, at that time, I wasn't educated about the olive oil and I didn't invest time reading the insert. I had a collection of oils and I ended up canceling my membership. I will be joining today. You didn't mention that you also included recipes for each oil. So it sounds like you've really come a long way with the education yeah, part. Absolutely. I mean, it's a big part of it, right? And, and teaching people how to make those swaps in their kitchen for and how to make simple things people don't want 25 step recipes anymore they want like what are four ingredients i can put together and make a nice healthy meal for my family that's going to be like something a grandmother would make in italy you know they, well, they want simple you know things those are the best ones. And, you know, Haley and Ann and I, we're, we're always working with all of our beautiful clients to teach them, you know, that food is medicine yes. and you don't have to be, you know, a five-star Michelin chef to know how to put a good meal together. And so right. you getting to put recipes in there is great for us too, because it's a resource Absolutely. week. It's another resource we can give to all of Absolutely. our listeners and to our members, uh, you know, who are, who are our, um, you know, our program clients, um, because- sure. We're always looking for new recipes. So thank you, because that makes yeah, it for you're, us. You're, you're and, more than welcome. And, um, and, and so, you know, they may need to substitute a couple of things, a couple of ingredients every now and then. But sure. I know that the recipes are healthy because I've, I've actually seen them. So yeah. thank you for all the educational oh. piece on there. You're, you're, you're more than welcome. I mean, we do, we do sneak in some unhealthy things because not all my, all my club members are health seekers. I have a lot of chefs and gourmets in the club too. Um, but there are some like guilty pleasure, like Annie's chocolate cake. It's a gluten-free chocolate cake that's made with hazelnut flour and almond flour and cocoa and olive oil. When you bake with olive oil, it's an incredible ingredient, especially with chocolate. So there are some secret, there, there are some naughty <laughs> olive oil recipes as well well they're not all like you know super super clean and pristine but you know my sister-in-law that's her favorite cake for her birthday so you can you can you can use those for for good occasions i guess not not everyday dining yeah, well, you know, absolutely, especially if it's if it's a gluten free recipe, you know, that's a really big one. Um, you know, we we really work at teaching people how you can have beautiful foods, delicious, yes. savory, sweet, yes. all the things, and you can just do it in a much healthier way. So I'm actually excited about that recipe. That actually sounds really, really good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because when you swap, like a lot of baked goods use a lot of like canola and seed oils and, and the fl they don't add flavor. They just add unhealthy oils. Like when you make a quick bread, like a zucchini bread or banana bread or that type of thing and you use a fruity olive oil, a fresh fruity olive oil, it's just, it takes it to a whole nother level. So I invite you guys, uh, Haley and Ann to uh, maybe if you're going to splurge on some baking, even if it's just like a I know you guys wouldn't do this as coaches, but like a box of brownies, use your olive oil because it's going to be like, what do you do to these brownies? They're so good. And that'll be your trick. It'll be your kitchen secret. Well, you know, actually, Anne is from a Czech background, and they are really big into all the, the different Czech pastries and the, and the baking. And Anne found out many years ago that she had celiac disease, oh, and she oh, was she she yeah. got very 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 sick, and mm -hmm. she ended up coming coming to me for help. And you know, fast forward, she's obviously doing very very well with her health. <laughs> But yes. she found alternate ways to make different recipes of things that she loves. Oh, she has come cool. to my house and she has made some of the best cookies and brownies <laughs> and different things because I don't bake. And so she does this. And now my daughter-in-law learned the recipes from Anne. And so she makes them for the grandkids. And of course, whenever I come visit, she'll make them for me too, because oh, I, I enjoy it. it. I just don't do a lot of baking. So, you know, yeah. we, we do enjoy our food. We are foodies. We just do it and okay. we just change some of the ingredients around but and that's absolutely how you should do it that's absolutely how you should do it so i'd love to unpack more of that and next time we're together i'd love to hear about some of the swaps you've been able to make and uh and and also before once you get your oil feel free to open it feel free to start to use it like as a community we can talk about 
your ideas? How did you use it? What's some of Dr. V's recipes that you've tried it in? Um, that would be really interesting too for us as a group. So, you know, just save a little bit for our tasting, you know, save a little bit, um, you know, for, for our tasting together whenever we get that on the schedule. But, um, you know, please take advantage and we can make that a, a collaboration. Uh, that, that'd be a lot of fun, a lot of fun. And try some very simple things. Simply steam some Ercovera, fresh Ercovera green beans, put them on a plate, drizzle them with olive oil and a little salt and just see how that lights up. Take a bowl of white beans, uh, just plain white beans. Uh, I don't care if they're canned, it's better than whatever. But anyway, just plain white beans, heat them up, drizzle them with fresh olive oil, a little herb salt or just salt and try them. You're Probably if they're canned, you don't even need salt. Just add olive oil and you're going to see them light up, right? Um, so try some really simple things like that uh, with your oil even prior to our call. That'd be fun to hear some ways that you guys have discovered that you like to use it because I'm a learner. I love to learn as well. So I look forward to learning from your group as well and some healthy ways that they've been able to leverage it in their kitchen. That's awesome. That's awesome. Thank you. Well, you know what? I just I want to thank you again for joining us and um, everyone in our programs who's joined us today. Thank you so much for being here with us today. Um, please pop it into the chat and comment if you enjoyed this and if you would like to do more things like this with us. Um, because if you do, um, it takes some organization on our end um, so that we can get these things done for you. But we're happy to bring these people in house so that you guys get the education, you get to meet other people. Um, and, and really, you know, I feel like supporting small business is so important, more now than ever. And not only are you supporting TJ and his business and his mission to let people, you know, actually have access to the real healthy version of olive oil, but you're also providing um, opportunities for these um, vineyards, these families that own these olive oil orchards in other countries who don't have an opportunity to share them with other people to actually, you're actually supporting them as well. So thank you for doing that. And we're getting a lot of comments in saying, thank you. I learned a lot and they're wanting more of this stuff. So so yeah, good. thank you good. very much. Welcome awesome. to this episode of Tribe Talk, everyone. Please join us for our next one. We will be sending out emails and messages letting you know about the upcoming tasting in two weeks. And um, thank you again. Have a beautiful day. Yay. Thank you. Ciao.